Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Pete Chadwick. I'm director of product management for, for cloud and systems management at SUSE. And with me today is, is Kershaw uh, Madoff, um, senior technical staff member for IBM. Uh, what we'd like to talk to you about is how uh, SUSE and IBM have been working together to pull mainframes into uh, cloud environments. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to, to Kershaw to, to start. Okay, very good. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I first wanted to just start about talking about um, our, our mainframe environment and uh, our latest um, uh, deliverables that we had. Now, the mainframe has been around for well over 50 years. And uh, what I can tell you is we've been evolving for the last 50 years. You wouldn't expect the technology uh, that, um, uh, you know, in this, in this type of uh, day and age that has been able to survive that long. And the only reason why we've been able to survive that long is we have continued to improve and um, evolve ourselves uh, making use of new technology, including uh, technology such as uh, OpenStack. Um, last year, our latest uh, versions or our latest servers that we made available uh, were known as Linux One servers. And we have two different models for that, the Linux One Emperor, a larger box, and then a Linux One Rockhopper. Uh, for those of you who were in Austin, uh, we actually had a Linux One Rockhopper down on the show floor. Uh, we weren't able to get one uh, here uh, in Barcelona. Uh, but the, the intention over here is to show you the fact that uh, these mainframes still continue to exist and, uh, and continue to, uh, uh, to provide uh, work, uh, workloads, uh, to be able to go off and run workloads. Um, this is going a little slower than usual. Okay, so from a, from a standpoint over here with Linux One, we have what we call diagonal scale. You know, people are familiar with scale out technology. People are familiar with scale up technology. Um, well, with uh, our environment over here on Linux One, you can have both scale up and scale out. And this is what we call diagonal scaling. And this is really important when we're talking about being able to go off and do things like extreme virtualization, uh, where you have uh, a hypervisor partition that's built into the firmware uh, to be able to go off and have complete isolation. Uh, you can go off and have uh, bare metal, 85, 85 instances of bare metal instances. Uh, and then uh, from a virtualization standpoint over here, you could have the most densest uh, environment around with respect to virtual machines. Uh, we also have a very super elastic system over here, uh, being able to go off and combine both horizontal and vertical scaling, uh, and being able to non-disruptively add or remove resources uh, to the guest environments uh, underneath. Um, the mainframe, as I mentioned, has been evolving for quite some time. Uh, I just wanted to put up an icon chart over here of all the various different technologies that do run on our platform. Uh, some of this newest stuff over here, Node.js, uh, PHP, uh, you know, Ruby, uh, these are all technologies that run uh, on, on our platform over here. And in fact, at the last OpenStack Summit that we had in Austin, we did a joint session with uh, Ubuntu, where we now have Ubuntu and Juju running on our platform. So again, a whole bunch of uh, new technologies that are able to be uh, run on our environment. Uh, the big differentiator over here with our environment compared to, for example, the traditional x86 architecture is the fact that we have uh, much better data serving capabilities. And it has to do with the underlying architecture that we have uh, within our platform. Uh, I'm not going to go through the various different charts over here, but um, um, what I want to just show is that uh, for various different databases that exist out there, uh, whether you're talking about MongoDB or whether you're talking about MariaDB, uh, you can have a lot more scale uh, of, of running those applications on our platform compared to others. You get better throughput um, compared to, uh, you know, x86 environments and you have the ability to be able to have uh, improved performance running those workloads on our platform. Okay. Oh, come on. Um, on our platform over here, we have um, two, different, uh, uh, two different hypervisors. Uh, we have the KVM hypervisor that exists on our platform. Um, 
and we also have the uh, ZVM plat uh, hypervisor. KVM is relatively new to our environment. Uh, that's been available for about a year now. Uh, and before that, uh, our own proprietary uh, hypervisor that we've had uh, is ZVM, has existed for 40 plus years. Um, today's session, we're going to focus mo mostly on uh, the ZVM uh, uh, proprietary uh, hypervisor that we've had over here. Uh, and that's, in fact, exactly what um, um, SUSE has been uh, providing support for within their SUSE OpenStack Cloud uh, product. Um, the, uh, the, the, the two different uh, hypervisors that I mentioned, uh, from a ZVM standpoint, our drivers are available out in GitHub. Uh, they haven't been accepted yet into the community over here. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, later over here. Uh, we're planning on trying to get that uh, uh, accepted into the OpenStack community next year in 2017. Uh, and the KVM drivers actually uh, for our environment uh, have already been accepted uh, into the driver. They were part of um, the, uh, uh, the deliverables that came out earlier this year. Um, and uh, you can also see them over here from a GitHub standpoint. Okay. Um, let's now talk about, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Pete, over here to talk about uh, the OpenStack sure. support that they have within the SUSE OpenStack Cloud. So first of all, one of the things I think most everybody is, is understands what a, what a distribution is. It's a, it's a prepackaged uh, version of OpenStack that is, uh, it comes with all the drivers, comes with all the necessary um, capabilities to actually stand up and run OpenStack easily. Uh, we believe that that's a, a much more efficient way for most organizations, especially enterprises, uh, to download and deploy OpenStack as opposed to pulling it directly from, uh, from trunk or maintaining that. Um, we still use, um, distributions do use code from upstream and most of them are, are shipping uh, fully open source tools. They're not, they're not adding in a lot of proprietary uh, things. Um, so in the case of, uh, in, in the case of SUSE OpenStack Cloud, um, that's what we do. Um, and if you look at uh, how we've been working with, uh, with System Z, uh, we've been, um, as, as, as Kershaw says, we've been working with ZVM to, uh, to deploy that. Now one of the things, we've actually been in the OpenStack business since 2012, which is when we shipped our first release, um, imaginatively called SUSE OpenStack Cloud One. Um, but back then, realistically, you could have, you know, prior to, this was based upon Essex, OpenStack Essex. And prior to that, realistically, if you didn't want to use, if you wanted to use a hypervisor, you used KVM. We worked within the community to get Zen support, so this is kind of what the a distribution looked like back then. You had Nova, you had Glance, you had Swift. Um, networking was built into Nova, so what was, you know, what became uh, Cinder, what became uh, Neutron were actually sitting inside the Nova code base. Um, and then you had a pretty, pretty simplified set of, of, of choices for what you ran on. You know, this is kind of what it looks like now. And this is, even this is not complete, but we've pulled networking out, we've pulled uh, block support out. We have a bunch of kind of microservice type things on the right that we're pulling in. We've got new APIs in terms of heat and, and cellometer. Um, but the key point is we've now got a wide range of hypervisors to choose from. You can use N, you can use KVM, you can use Hyper-V, you can use ESX through, through vCenter, and you can use ZVM. Um, and as, as Kershaw pointed out, you can use ZKVM. Um, we currently support, uh, we at SUSE support all of these in a, in a single cloud environment. So if you want to have a mix of open source hypervisors and proprietary hypervisors, um, you can easily do that. And from your user's perspective, you've got a single, a single dashboard that you can, uh, uh, that you can uh, manage all of that environment from. So let me turn it back over to, uh, to Kershaw to talk a little bit more about what the cloud manager appliance is. Sure. Okay, so uh, with uh, our ZVM hypervisor over here, we have something built into that known as the uh, Cloud Manager Appliance. And essentially, uh, the Cloud Manager Appliance is uh, an OpenStack uh, controller and uh, compute node that we ship as part of the hypervisor itself. 
Um, this means that the same exact drivers that are you know, part of the SUSE OpenStack Cloud 6 stuff is also shipped inside of ZVM over here if somebody wants to be able to go off and use uh, the stuff that comes directly with the hypervisor itself. Um, under the covers over here, we have some, um, uh, we have some uh, technology over here inside of ZVM. We use XCAT technology over here to uh, drive some of the underlying um, uh, systems management API calls that we have within, a Z within the ZVM environment itself. Uh, but this Cloud Manager appliance that uh, we have as part of ZVM can very well be configured in multiple different modes. Uh, it can be configured in a pure controller mode environment uh, where the OpenStack controller and the compute nodes are running uh, uh, natively on the hardware itself, uh, on, on the hypervisor itself. Or in the case of uh, the SUSE OpenStack Cloud stuff over here, it can be configured in minimum mode where uh, essentially uh, we're just providing the underlying XCAT capability over here for SUSE OpenStack Cloud to be able to go off and take advantage of. Um, and uh, given having said that, let me turn it back over to you, Pete, to talk about how you uh, take advantage of that. Sure. So, so, so these are the capabilities that are available in CMA today uh, based upon Liberty. Um, there's obviously some enhancements that are coming um, uh, as Newton rolls out. But the key point is it's got, it's got support for some of the latest features. It runs on the most current versions of, of Red Hat Linux and, and SUSE Linux. So where SUSE has, has, has been in, um, as far as OpenStack goes, as I mentioned, um, we had our first uh, release of SUSE OpenStack Cloud in 2012. We actually joined the OpenStack community uh, as a corporate contributor in 2011 um, and then participated actively in the creation of the OpenStack Foundation. Um, Alan Clark, uh, who was our director of community engagement, uh, is the chairman of the, uh, of the OpenStack Foundation board. And then we've had a, a series of releases um, since then. Uh, we actually just announced yesterday SUSE so OpenStack Cloud 7, which is the, our, our Newton-based release. Uh, which will be available uh, end of this year, early uh, 2017. And as I mentioned, we have what we call mixed hypervisor support. So you have, we kind of grayed out the control plane. So you can deploy a control plane currently on, on x86. So we're, uh, you know, back to, to Kershaw's comments, we are running in MN mode. We're managing, we're managing two uh, the ZVM environment, um, but we can use all of these different environments within a, within a single cloud. So if you have an existing environment with, with System Z or you're looking at pulling in uh, Z into your, uh, into your environment to take, to take advantage of the diagonal scalability that, 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 that Kershaw was t talking about, you can do that and still have it coexist with, ex with either existing VMware workloads or as you're looking at, at, at moving into a KVM environment. Uh, some of the key features of SUSE OpenStack Cloud, um, you know, it's, it's, it's built on Newton, so we take advantage of a lot of the, the, of the exciting enhancements to Newton. If you want to learn more about that, I'm a member of the product working group. We have some sessions tomorrow that talks about, dives into a little more detail about the uh, uh, OpenStack roadmap and what we've been delivering in Newton and on. Uh, we do support the most recent version of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. Uh, one of the things that we've really been working on is non-disruptive upgrade. So now the upgrade from one release of SUSE OpenStack Cloud to the next without, without taking down any running workloads. Uh, this is clearly something that we heard from customers as being a big inhibitor of being able to migrate to take advantage of newer and newer capabilities within, uh, within OpenStack. Um, we're also adding container, uh, container support, so you can now deliver a container as a service. Um, we're also, one of the things that we think we pioneered was, was deploying the control plane um, in a highly available state with SUSE OpenStack Cloud 6. We extended that to compute nodes, so you could automatically recover compute nodes if there was a failure in your, in your infrastructure. We're now extending that up to actually managing the, 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 virtual, machine inf uh, the virtual machines themselves. And then lastly, uh, we're enhancing with SUSE OpenStack Cloud 7, we're actually providing both managed from as well as managed to uh, for ZVM environments. And just as, you know, there's a lot of projects in OpenStack, this is just a quick, uh, quick overview of what we supported with SUSE OpenStack Cloud 6. Um, and you can see 
we had kind of some, you know, decent coverage. We pick up a lot more. We also have a lot more things that we're doing in technology preview, which means that you can download the packages. Um, we'll help you get them set up and configured, um, but we're not necessarily uh, sure they're ready for uh, for full production environment yet. Um, so, in terms of how do you how do you use ZVM? Um, you run CMA in minimum mode. Uh, we can support uh, the network configurations um, that are named in the, in the IBM documentation. Um, you will be able to run either from x86 or directly on ZVM for the control plane, and but but use uh, use ZVM as a, as a compute node. Um, uh, there's a lot of documentation on how do you get CVM set up, um, and we would recommend anybody going down that path to start with that um, because you have to do a lot of uh, configuration of the Z environment before you can uh, install SUSE OpenStack Cloud 6. So that will just kind of wrap up. Oh, sure. So um, I do want to mention, um, you know, from a customer standpoint, what we're seeing is, you know, most customers are moving to OpenStack environments initially on their x86 environments. Uh, for those customers who happen to have mainframes also as part of their uh, infrastructure, they're looking at how can I move the mainframe also into this OpenStack environment. And when you have this environment of both x86 and the mainframe, wanting to be able to go off and manage that with a single OpenStack distribution, that's where the SUSE OpenStack Cloud um, uh, product positions itself. You can go off and use that single product to be able to go off and manage both your x86 from an OpenStack standpoint and also the mainframe environment to be able to go off and do both those. Again, Horizon UI will be able to go off and do that. Now, our intention over here is to continue to upgrade the OpenStack capabilities that we continue to ship inside of ZVM, lockstep with uh, our, our partners over here as they uh, continue to move up in OpenStack releases. So our Cloud Manager appliance that's currently based on Liberty is going to get upgraded to Newton. Uh, that's going to be happening uh, sometime early next year. Uh, and, you know, as, uh, as SUSE OpenStack Cloud 7, that's also based on Newton comes out, you know, both will be able to go off and uh, participate uh, together in those types of environments. Um, uh, so from a summary standpoint over here, uh, the, the, um, the support that we have as part of ZVM uh, is shipped as part of an integrated appliance uh, with the community drivers. Uh, we do continue to plan on um, um, enhancing those uh, or upgrading those as the new OpenStack releases become available. Uh, and we do continue to uh, plan on working uh, with partners such as SUSE over here who uh, provide support from a ZVM capability standpoint. Um, so that was kind of the wrap up. Yeah, well, I guess that's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's some uh, hidden slides over here. Um, so one of the things over here that um, maybe an ask that I have of all of you over here is the fact that uh, many of you might be existing SUSE customers uh, to take a look at the SUSE OpenStack Cloud product itself to see how that could very well be used uh, potentially with your mainframe environment. Uh, and then the other ask that I have of you is, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the ZVM drivers right now are currently out in GitHub. Um, they're not into the community yet. Um, and, uh, you know, we're trying to get that uh, accepted into the community next year. Um, we'd like to, um, you know, recruit or help ask for any help that you may be able to provide us in trying to get those uh, drivers accepted as part of the community over here. Uh, we're getting our CI environment all set up. We have uh, all the necessary um, infrastructure in place to be able to go off and prove that we can become part of the community over here. But the fact of the matter is, um, you know, we see partners such as SUSE taking advantage and already downloading those drivers and incorporating in those products over here. Uh, so we do see viability from that standpoint. And um, anything that uh, you can do to be able to help us uh, get those drivers accepted as part of the community uh, next year, that would be, uh, you know, uh, one of the asks that we have of you. So with that, are there any questions or, or comments from the audience? So uh, mainframe customers today that want to put OpenStack onto their mainframes, are they looking to just get, uh, to maintain utilize, uh, utilization and just uh, continue the same service they have to hold the newer technology, or are they looking to do something new with OpenStack on mainframe? Um, what we're seeing actually, you know, people who have mainframes today in their shop are doing it mostly for workload consolidation. 
Um, you know, they have Oracle databases today that are being spread across their x86 servers. They want to bring those uh, databases onto uh, the mainframe environment to be able to have workload consolidation, consolidation of licenses, etc. Uh, so that's the existing workload that already exists. The move to OpenStack is more from a service delivery standpoint. How can I go off and make that service that I'm providing easier to my, for my IT staff, easier for my end users for them to be able to go off and do that? Because um, you know, today without OpenStack, the end user uh, having the capability to be able to go off and start a virtual machine, Linux guest environment, for example, and then you know, running an Oracle database inside there, uh, is mostly done by uh, homegrown scripts. Um, the move to OpenStack is to be able to help automate uh, quite a lot of that, standardize a lot of that, uh, and remove the need for the IT staff to maintain those homegrown uh, scripting environments. And that's, uh, and that's pretty much what we see as well, is it's, it's a combination of, you know, it, it, it's, it really is about how do I provide a more flexible self-service interface um, into a Z environment so that I can either do development and test of existing applications or, or, or creating brand new applications. So it's, it's, it's pretty parallel to what we see on the x86 side as well. Good. Any, uh, any other questions? Anything else? Okay. Well, thanks everybody for your attention and have a great rest of the summit. Thank you.